Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Film Box Podcast, a movie podcast made for movie fans by movie fans, presented by Press Play. From tier lists and top fives to movie reviews and really bad hot takes, we've got anything and everything a movie fan could ever want. I'm your host, Aaron Sousa, and my favorite ho- uh, th- Halloween, Halloween. I almost said Halloween. I almost said Halloween, but it's actually Thanksgiving. My favorite Thanksgiving food has got to be that mac and cheese. 100%. I'm Connor. My favorite Thanksgiving food is mashed potatoes. Mm, that's a good choice. I'm Sam, and my favorite Thanksgiving food is cranberry sauce. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just expand on that? Are you one of the people that puts cranberry sauce on your turkey? Um, so not when I'm eating the turkey alone, but if I have like leftover turkey that I'm making like a turkey sandwich, then yes. Oh, God. And mayonnaise. Uh, M and her whole family just roast me because they use uh, cranberry sauce as like the sauce for turkey and not gravy. It, it boggles my mind. <laughs> <sighs> but we got a full episode for you guys today. We're going to be doing, uh, we got our 30 pods of movies. We got another an, another week, another week down. We're like 11 weeks in already. <laughs> Um, we've got a movie grid to do. We've got a little fun game that Sam's bringing back, and and we're gonna be ranking Connor's top twenty-five movies. Sam and I are gonna be putting them into a tier list, and mm-hmm. inevitably making him so mad <laughs> at our choices. We, we will let you know next podcast if we're still friends or not. Yeah, <laughs> you'll know if I show up or not. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll, we'll plan out a recording, and Connor just won't be there. I know because depending depending on how this goes, we got your your uh, top twenty fives as well, gentlemen. And I will oh, I true. will rain hell if I have to. <laughs> what a stupid choice! <laughs> Fuck Lord of the Rings, pee pee poo poo. <laughs> oh man! Um, before we get into all of that fun stuff, we gotta do our movie of the week. It's the thirty pods of movies this week. We're talking about the movie with the best soundtrack. Who wants to kick us off here? I'll go. All right. I was going to say <laughs> the crickets were, were starting to come out. <laughs> All right. So I have three, cho- I have three choices. Um, my third place is Tron Legacy. Okay. That's a, out, of, out so, of nowhere. So it's Daft Punk is the... The, mm. the writers and the DJs or whatever like that. Um, I, I just I, composers, composers. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy the techno electronic music that that has. So, um, my number two pick is Inception. It's another good pick. Um, but it's crazy how how was it Hans Hans Zimmer did that score. Didn't li- didn't even watch the movie. Like, didn't even have a cut of the movie. He just kind of made it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and my number one pick is also another Hans Zimmer is Interstellar. R- really? Yeah. Wow. That's the one that he made without seeing the movie. <laughs> was Interstellar? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was not Inception. It was Interstellar. I I could have sworn that you were I, I, one I of my so. <laughs> picks one of my picks i could have sworn that you were going to go with as well um 
I'll go, I guess, since uh, since I'm teasing it already. I've got I've got three choices as well. <laughs> um, so my my top choice is, uh, or not my top choice, but my first choice, um, is going to be a little movie called Oppenheimer. I don't know if you heard of it. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, but uh, that score is pretty good. The score is pretty decent. I started watching it again the other day, and by other day I mean yesterday. <laughs> I feel good that I can say this because he doesn't listen, but I did get my dad Oppenheimer on Blu-ray. Nice, um, nice. That's a good choice. Yeah. Well, by the time has he seen it yet? No. Oh. I also got him Top Gun Maverick. Oh. But that that might be for me too because I, yeah, I don't know how <laughs> that movie. You really like Top Gun Maverick? Yeah. <laughs> just a little, just a little bit. Um, we might see my it later. second choice. My, <laughs> all right, <laughs> my second choice is Pirates of the Caribbean: The Curse of the Black Pearl. The first one mm. has for iconic soundtracks. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Every song in that in that movie is so good. Uh, and my top choice in the one that I thought Sam was going to have on his list is Lord of the Rings. For me, it's Fellowship. But any of the Lord of the Rings will will do. Yeah, that's definitely top five. But yeah. Uh, well, I'm last, so I'll, I'll make mine quick. Uh, Aaron said Oppenheimer. Uh, I love the soundtrack. I still listen to it at the gym. Mm. Um, I swear to God, it when I hear uh, "Can You Hear the Music," I feel like I can see the atoms in my like <laughs> skin just <laughs> just ripping apart. Um, it makes you, str- it makes you str- like you're actually getting stronger by listening to that. Exactly. Like I can see the muscle growing, like ripping and growing. <laughs> yep. um, but also both into the Spider-Verse and across the Spider-Verse. I love the soundtracks, mm-hmm. uh, especially uh, for across the Spider-Verse with Metro Boomin um, doing it. Just banger after banger. Good choice. Good choice. Thank you. <sighs> well... I think it's time to talk about what we've been watching lately, gentlemen. Do you have your movies that you've seen in the last week? Um, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go first because go I went last. <laughs> so uh, uh, with my lovely girlfriend, I watched Miss Americana. It's the Taylor Swift documentary. Um, nice. <laughs> nice. It's it it pretty good. Uh, I wa- yeah? Yeah. I watched <laughs> Faux. The uh, sci-fi movie with uh, Paul Mescal and Cersei mm-hmm. Ronan did not like it. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but you have two very prominent Irish actors. Why? Why would you set the movie in America? Like it? It didn't have to. Just let them be Irish. I guess. Yeah, well. I guess Ireland just doesn't exist in the future. Apparently. No, only America exists in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw It's a Wonderful Knife. It's a uh, like horror comedy set at Christmas time. Not not great. Um, <laughs> but good palate cleanser. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you expected from a movie called It's a Wonderful Knife. Listen, <laughs> it had Justin Long in it, but. My review on Letterbox is just fake tan Botox. Justin Long can't hurt you anymore. Um, <laughs> it's got Justin Long, uh, Joel McHale, some other like kind of horror mainstays, but it was just very boring. Um, but nice to to cleanse the palate. I watched Stream Scenario, the Nick Cage movie where he just shows up in everyone's stream. I really liked it. Four stars. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice. Um, I'll go next. I watched seven movies this week. Okay. <laughs> Didn't even realize it. Um, including three in one day. <laughs> so I'm pulling a me. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, so I watched. Um, so recently, I talked about it on the pod. I watched uh, La La Land, uh-huh. and because of that, it inspired me to rewatch Tick Tick Boom, uh-huh. which is still phenomenal. So you know. Um. And then I watched The Creator, finally. Um, I liked it, but that's about as far as I'll go. <laughs> it did not blow me away. The visuals were spectacular, and I liked the uh, the themes, but the story was kind of meh. 
Uh, I watched Butcher's Crossing, another Nick Cage movie. So Connor and I doubled down on Nick Cage this week. Cage. Mm-hmm. Um, How many movies does he have this year alone? Just it's gotta be many. at least like five. Because he had the old way, Dream Scenario, Butcher's Crossing, Retirement Plan. Do we count the Flash? Because I don't, I don't know if he was no, technically I don't count in it. Because he was, he wasn't. He was just, um, it was like the CG. Oh, yeah, nope. no, I would, I won't count that. Wrong way. Uh, let's look at his. I got Indiba. it. He had Renfield. Sympathy flat. Old way butchers crossed it. Yeah, because massive talent was last year. So. Yeah. Almost eight movies because he's got. Oh, Phylactus. Is that even? I don't even know. I don't know. He's on Anyways, he's, he he got a, he's got a lot of movies this year. <laughs> he's got a lot of movies just in general. <laughs> Yeah, man. The man loves movies. Nice. Sam's just giving us fucking lens flares over here. <laughs> um, So, all right. So, I watched Butcher's Crossing. It was okay. A little bit not really my... I wish it, I wish it had done things differently. Um, And then I watched Booksmart, which is great. I liked Booksmart a lot. It's a, it's a coming-of-age teen comedy drama. With Caitlin Dever and, um, oh God, I can't remember her name. Uh, Beanie Feldstein. They were really good. Um, speaking of really good, I watched The Holdovers, which uh, I gave it, I believe, a four, four and a half out of five. Yeah. Yeah, a four More and a half out of five. It is within my top five movies of this year. So take that as you may. Mm-hmm. I will Phenomenal be, film. I will be seeing it later today. Yeah. Phenomenal film. Just nothing bad about it, except for the plot is obviously it's predictable, but that doesn't even matter. Um, I watched Sixteen Candles for the first time. I don't know why. I think uh, oh, people at work were talking about it, so I was like, I've never seen it. I'll give it a watch. <laughs> How'd you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it was fine. How dare you? <laughs> It was fine. I was not. It was a little. Some of the comedy was very outdated. Yeah. Was, um, yeah. No shit. Then, <laughs> it was, no, but it was like offensive. Like they were talking about Chinese. There was a Chinese character in that movie, and they were like full on, just like it was racism coming out. I was like, whoa, <laughs> mommy, you're being racist in the movie. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, just yesterday, I watched Hunger Games: The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So, Thoughts? great, great, great movie. Um, not really. It was <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. Um, I, I I liked it. I think, for, which is wild to say, it would have been better as two movies. Yeah, really. It yep. like the first two hours of it, like up through the hunger games the actual games themselves were phenomenal but then they have like a whole third act which was like an integral piece of the story it was but it, it was, was a, like it the was... last the last 45 minutes were like just like let's let's get through this yeah it was a good final act it was just it was just yeah rushed rushed and unneeded yeah like you could have made that movie 4 hours long and it would have been that would have been like perfect so two movies would have been solid, but yeah, that's what I've seen. Sam, <laughs> what right. about you? Yeah, so um, I watched uh, some a Disney movie Encanto. Um, nice, solid. I watched that with Kayla. Well, I mean, I watched it. She. Fell it asleep, looks so. like it looks like you're heading into the light. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you, I can barely see your face. Oh, I just see well, this like heaven ascending. And there goes <laughs> Sam on his way to heaven. I'm on the I'm on the east side of the the, the building, so it's like there's just the sun. Oh, just the rises. sunrise just yes. yeah, how beautiful! The sun rises in the east. Oh, <laughs> right. Anyways, I'm sorry. Oh, I was <laughs> just I just got in a trance with uh, Lord of the Rings because that's how Rohan <laughs> rides into battle with the sun. <laughs> I about to say you're just entranced by nature. <laughs> um, and then I watched. Uh, the comedy quiz lady with Aquafina and Sandra O. Oh. That wasn't bad. Um, what do you think of Aquafina? She did well. Um, mm. Again, the acting and the chemistry between the two were really good. Uh, it's just the comedy did not hit at all. Oof. Like I did. It's not what you want to see out of a comedy. <laughs> I don't think I laughed like 
once. Maybe, <laughs> maybe like maybe like once or twice, but like it was just I didn't I did not like the comedy. Um, but it was it was good. It, it was the story was good and stuff like that. Um, and then I watched the Marvels latest Marvel movie. That was it. It's definitely overhated. Um, um, obviously, I think. The second it was announced, people were going to hate it without seeing mm-hmm. it. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. It's not great whatsoever, but... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. This movie sucks cock, but... <laughs> no, it was... Uh, you know. No, it was, it, was, it was okay. I mean, it was, again, the chemistry between the three um, main leads and the, uh, the acting and everything like that was eh. Um, so... Mm. We'll see we're, we'll see what direction Marvel is going now. So, yeah, um, we can talk about that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. And then I also watched Hunger Games: The Palette of Sunbirds and Snakes. So, and I have pretty much the nice. same, I have pretty much the same thoughts as Aaron. You know, it should have been two movies. Yep. Um, but it was a solid movie though. Yeah. My biggest pro- I Rachel Zegler was phenomenal. Yeah, she was I got to really, say she was really, really good. good. The prob the biggest problem is that like the Hunger Games the the first two acts of the movie like built up and had the hung- the actual games themselves and then by the end of the movie it it felt like it had no lasting impact on the film because it was like here's the games and then now we got this storyline to yeah. talk about yeah. and we're never going to talk about the games again. Yeah, what um yeah, much think, different than like how Oppenheimer was like everything for the first two acts was building up to the Trinity test. But then when Oppenheimer did well, is that last hour was like the fallout of that, and like you knew that there was that was a huge impact, like huge circumstance, and everything that happened after was because of, in large part, the that test and yeah, so yeah. it was like. And that's mm-hmm. why we agree that it should have been two movies. You know, they, after the Hunger Games, um, it, it, that would have been a perfect cliffhanger. Like, I'm not going to spoil mm-hmm. anything, obviously, but it would have been a perfect cliffhanger for the next movie. I agree. I agree. So. Well, I'll have to see it then, so I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Connor, I, I do want to talk later after you see The Holdovers, because The Holdovers has probably the single funniest one-liner I have ever heard in a movie. It is... Literally, our theater burst out laughing, and I could not stop laughing uh, when it when it happened. I can't wait then. Yeah, it was so funny. It just came out of it just comes out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> it's so good. Um, all right, let's move on. We got to talk about uh, we got to do movie movie grid. Yeah, we're doing movie grid. Sure. Um. So for today's movie grid, it is. November the 19th, stalling while I pull it up. Our <clears throat> our columns are released from 1980 to 1999, released from 2000 to 2010, and released from 2011 to 2023. And mm. our rows are Daniel Day-Lewis, Keanu Reeves, Gwyneth Paltrow. Nice. Um, so I already have one for Daniel Day Lewis, 1980 to 1999. Go with my left foot. This one? The story yeah. of Christy Brown. Nice. Ha-ha! 32. That's, he won an Oscar for that role. Uh, I know 2011, 2023 is the Phantom Thread. Um, yeah. You could also go Lincoln. 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 It's just Phantom Threads, I believe. Phantom. Thread. Phantom Thread. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're not making that same mistake. Nope. No. <laughs> with in, with Inglorious the, Bastards. Yeah. yeah. The Inglorious Bastards. Okay. So and then, um, do you want to go like gangs? Gangs? Sure. Or, yeah. Do you think gangs or there will be blood? Oh, I, there will be blood will definitely be high up. Right? The higher one, I think. Yeah. We're going to go for 2010 Gangs of New York, 39%. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Daniel D. Lewis is done. Keanu Reeves. Uh, what is was he in? What was he in? Was he in Harold and Kumar? I have no is idea. Is that what he was in? 
Well, there's what was he in? There's obviously like Point Break, uh, Speed. Ooh, ooh. Those he was are both in, good um, ones. For the two thousand, he for the two thousand to two thousand ten, he was in um, Constantine. Yes, that's okay. a, that's a good. That's one. a good pull. Was that that's a good was pull. that in between these or was that like ninety nine? No, that I think that was two thousands. Pretty sure that was two thousands. All right. Okay. I, I trust you. I believe. I trust you. Constantine. Constantinople. Fourteen percent. Good pull. Good pull. I only know that because um, I see that all the time on Max. So. <laughs> I did see it. What it about was good? What about twenty eleven to twenty twenty three? Uh, there's a, there's that really really atrocious one with him and Ana de Armas and some other girl. Knock knock. Oh God. Because I th- every, yeah, that's I, gonna be like a nice zero. Everyone's mm-hmm. gonna say like one of the John Wicks. Yeah, six percent. Yeah, six or Matrix. Nice. True. Yeah, Matrix. Um, um, when was was early or like Matrix three? <laughs> um, <laughs> in the two thousands. Matrix or was that like three, that was was that Revolu- was revolutions right or is that the it was one? one of those ones because there's the matrix the i don't matrix know we could also go with just one of connor's like speed or whatever it was whatever else it was that he had i said point break point break, point break. Point break that might be, be a good yeah one. point break might be a good one okay because everyone's gonna say matrix point break 12 percent. 12 nice good call good call all right now gwyneth paltrow the 80s to 99 romeo and juliet i was gonna say seven yeah <laughs> or no it's shakespeare in love it's shakespeare in love that's what it is shakespeare in love i believe in you 32 percent. not bad uh 20 2000 2010 iron man i was gonna say we could always just <laughs> knock out the easy ones iron man and i uh end game yeah I don't actually know anything else that she's been in. Honestly, neither do I, to be honest. The damn, <laughs> All right, well, let's... the damn Marvel effect. I know. Wait, wasn't she in? Wasn't she in Hook? Aaron, you've seen no. Hook. I don't remember it. <laughs> no, she was Always. not in Hook. Besides, that was in the nineties. Oh, it was in the nineties. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're just gonna go. I'll look, we'll look after. We're this. just gonna go Iron Man. Yeah, fif- almost fifty percent. Oh wow! Actually, yeah. I'm surprised it's not higher. <laughs> and do do you want to do uh, Iron Man three? <laughs> I feel like the. Uh, what, 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 we what could go we Infinity think? War. I was say, what, oh, and End Game. Like which one? Yep. I would say Infinity War because she literally has one, the one scene. One scene. In one Infinity, scene. Infinity, yeah, Infinity yeah, War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Infinite. <laughs> Inf- Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War. Eight percent. Let's go. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. Top, okay. We did not we did not do too hot compared to <laughs> everyone else. Uh the top guesses were My Left Foot, uh, There Will Be Blood, and Phantom Thread for Daniel Day Lewis. Wow, I was, we could have gone with Lincoln and would have had a better time. Oh, yeah. I guess. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Yeah, uh, I'm shocked too. Okay, we got the Matrix. Matrix again. Uh, what was that? Retribution, revelation, resurrection, resurrection. Re- revolution. I don't know. There's one of the R's, the R U words. Uh, and then John Wick Chapter Four were his top picks. And for Wild, Gwyneth Paltrow, Shakespeare in Love, Iron Man, and Endgame. So it was a good pull not to go Endgame. Yeah. yeah. All right. I gotta look up the Hook cast. Um, I got. It. I got this Hook. I got it. I got, I got it. it. I got she it. was. I Teenage it. Wendy Darling was Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, what? How did you pull that? Oh, I don't wait. know. No, because I just saw it recently, and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> that looks so familiar. I always get her and Kirsten Dunst mixed up. Because mm. I was going to say, mm. oh, what about Tower of Terror? But that was Kirsten Dunst as a kid, mm. not her. Yeah, she oh. was... She was teenage Wendy Darling in the flashbacks for what Dame Maggie Smith was, uh, for Maggie Smith's character. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you pulled that. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> that would have been a z- – actually, can we can, can we try that real quick and see what that would have been? <laughs> yeah. Let me – we're going to pull up an can, incognito I, window. Yeah. Movie. I want to see this. Okay. I also – we we are still seeing the uh, – the old movie grid. 
I mean, you can't <laughs> just the heavy you, side. I mean, and you can't even see me, so. Yeah, I know. And Sam's just <laughs> fully being enveloped by the light. <laughs> Sam's on his way to heaven now. Here um, we go. Okay, so it hook. So it's hook, yep. For 1980, 1999. 3%. Th- I'm surprised it's even 3%. I'm shocked that it's actually 3%. I am kind of curious. What was Iron Man 3? Oh, 29. Good, good, 29. good call, then. <laughs> All right. Good call. Uh, Cool. All right. Let's move on. We got another game. Do we want to do the game, or do we want to quick touch on some news, the Warner Brothers stuff? Yeah, let's let's touch on the news so we can right. move on with our game. Uh, so Warner Brothers, having not learned <laughs> their lesson, uh, last year in August, they vaulted the Batgirl movie and... Uh, like the Scooby Doo, or not even Scooby Doo. It was just like the Scoob Hall. Scoob, yeah, Scoob, uh, Hall or Christmas special or what? One of their holiday specials just vaulted mm-hmm. it for a tax write off. Uh, they tried to do it again this year with Coyote vs. Acme. Um, I want to say that's James Gunn's movie. Yeah, the one he produced. When yep. he produced with like John Cena uh, as a star. Uh, after it was testing like very well in like test screenings, mm-hmm. it was like gonna it's gonna like do very well, but they decided it was not worth the trouble of trying to uh not even like uh get it to the to get it to screens, but even just to sell it. It just yeah. apparently wasn't worth their effort. That's wild. Mm-hmm. But through the power of online bullying and <laughs> Uh, probably more so other uh, filmmakers deciding not to work with Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they decided to uh, take it off the shelves, and now they're uh, working on selling it to another distributor. Nice. Um, well, it, it doesn't surprise me. Like, First off, they were going to write it off for like 30 mil. Mm-hmm. The movie probably would have made 30 mil mm-hmm. if they had just released it. Or sold it, so I don't understand like that whole thing. And also, it was done. Yeah, wasn't it? It wasn't like they were like mid development. Like the movie was finished. But I find it so funny that like they they announced that they were like faulting it and completely canning it, and then all of a sudden they were like, oh. "Yeah, filmmakers just started canceling meetings with us. Yeah, people so. just stop wanting to work with us if like we're not. I don't know why." <laughs> It's only three times that we've done it in the past yeah. year. So, glad to see that they reversed course, but David Zaslav continues to prove that he is the scummiest of scum. Did you see it? When it comes to... I want to say it was like uh, Joaquin Castro, one of the, uh, um, a lawmaker, was like, yeah, no, we're going to launch an investigation into this because um, <laughs> you you should not be allowed to, to scrap a fully made movie for a tax write-off. Yeah. Um, Seems a little uh, loophole-y. Mm-hmm. But yeah, luckily, the art won out. Fuck Zaslav. Mm. Um, and do we want to touch on a little, little, little uh, Fantastic Four? Um, yeah, we can We can briefly. So it's been, ru- it's been rumored that uh, our Mr. Fantastic is going to be Pedro Pascal himself. Kind of out of nowhere. Um, yeah, he was not in any of the rumors. Then all of a sudden, it's like we got him, we got him, guys. Don't worry. Yeah, which is, I don't know. I, I was thinking about it. You kind of forget that Marvel is still like this powerhouse of like movies. Yeah, because I, yeah. I was thinking like, oh no, they're probably gonna have to go with like someone like a little lesser known. You know, um, not like the whole unknown route, but getting Pedro Pascal, one of the hottest stars right now. Potentially, that's, yeah, that's impressive. It's mm-hmm. impressive. They got a lot riding on this. <laughs> well, that was Fantastic the, Four fails. That was the thing. They need they need this one to hit. Eesh. Um. All right, let's go into let's go into Sam's game. Yes. All right. Which I don't know if we have a title for it other than Sam's game. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, that's, why that's don't fine. you describe what the, what this is? Yeah. So um, if I you need to find some paper. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get 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 some notes ready. Um, so if you know if you have not heard about this game or have not listened to the previous have podcast, not heard about this game, um, turd. Uh, so this is the Rotten Tomatoes top five, I guess. 
Um, so I will pick a any kind of actor or actress, and then I will name off six movies that they've been in. Five of them will be the top five, and then one like outlier that's not. And it's Aaron and Connor's job to um, to order them to a top rated to the number five. So cool. I'm ready. All right. Are you we ready? We did not it. have a good showing last time. No. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> All right. So first up, we got Ana de Armas. Oh, God. Oh, this should be easy. <laughs> All right. So, yep. So movies. No Time to Die. Blade Runner 2049. Okay. Knives Out. She's got some bangers. Mm-hmm. The gr- the Gray Man. Ooh. War Dogs. Okay. And The Informer. Um so first first right off the bat, No Time to Die, Blade Runner and Knives Out are easily the top 3. Easily, yes. <laughs> um so I'm thinking I'm thinking Knives Out might be number one. I think so. I'm pretty sure it's in the 90s. Yeah. I want to say. Um, I'm um, good with putting that at number one. All right. What about Blade Runner? I'm pretty sure Blade Runner 2049 is in the 80s, like low 80s. I I, I definitely see that. I, I think. Cause I don't, do you think like three? Well, I don't know if No Time to Die was that like. I, I could see it being in like the low eighties, maybe like okay. like eighty eighty four ish. Um I th- I feel like Blade Runner was like an eighty two. Mm. Hmm. Um but I'm okay with putting Blade Runner at two and then No Time to Die at three. Blade Runner two. I kinda like that. No time to die three. Okay. Hmm. Runner and then no time. And then this is where it gets interesting. Because I'm pretty sure Gray Man is going to be like in the 70s. So I would be, I, I think that's either going to be four or five. Mm-hmm. I th- I, have you ever heard I, of The Informer? No. Okay, I'm going to put that at six then. Okay. Because I, I, I feel like every other movie she's been in, like all are these other five, yeah, very well aware of, yeah, and good on um, good on you, Sam, for not going like uh, a, ghosted, a, a blonde, <laughs> blonde. What was blonde, the one you yeah. did with uh, Deep Water with Ben Affleck last year? Oh God, it's atrocious. Um, um, oh yeah. So what about War Dogs? Where do you where do you put War Dogs? I don't think War Dogs is that good, to be honest. It might be. I think it. I think it might be five. Okay, let's go with that. And I, by War not dogs, good, I mean in the context of this list, not like as a movie in general. Um, yeah. So that would leave the Gray Man four. Yes. Okay, so we got knives. Okay. knives out, Blade Runner, No Time to Die, The Gray Man, War Dogs, The Informer. All right, let us know how we did, Ball of Light. Lock, lock, lock it in. Lock it in. Yeah, lock it so, in. So, you guys are off to a great start. Better than last time. We got to hear it out first because <laughs> he did deke us. So, the number five movie, War Dogs. Okay. Number mm-hmm. four, The Informer. Oh. Um, oh, sorry. War Dogs is a 62%. Okay. And The Informer is a 64%. Oh. Okay. Damn, so close. That's annoying. <laughs> um, no Time to Die is number three at 83%. Sweet. Ooh. Blade Runner, 88%. Oh, nice. wow. I gave it did. less credit than it had. <laughs> and uh, Knives Out at 97%. So what was Gray Man? Like 55? 44%. Ooh. I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I thought right. it was wow. fine. We did pretty good. We, we did pretty yeah. good. We, I mean, yeah, we just mixed up the gray man. 
and everything else should have bumped up one. Yeah, not 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 off to, not off to a bad start. All right, who's next? We got Jeremy Renner next. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! All right, what all we, right. What we got Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol. M I G P. Hope I remember. Avengers Endgame. Okay. All right. The Town. Okay. Joe Mazzula's favorite movie. <laughs> um, The Hurt Locker. Okay. Oh, man, Oscar he's got winner. some fucking bangers. Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. Rogue Nation. And Arrival. Wow. Oh, trying to f- hmm. Wow, this is hard. <laughs> and you know what's crazy too? Like if there's still more that he could have been like I can yeah. say like Wind River. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Um All right. Sh- um What do you think is the the lowest one here? It's got to be one of the Mission Impossibles. Um, because end game's high, end game's high. The town is high, hurt lockers high, Arrive. and arrivals high. So, which was the worst Mission Impossible? Well, the worst one was two, but <laughs> yeah. the worst of these two. Of these two. <laughs> so, I want to say Rogue Nation was four, Ghost Protocol five, or unless nope, there was the other, Fallout. The other way around. Other way around. So Rogue it's. Nation. Oh yeah, Ghost, Ghost Protocol, Protocol was, was four. four. Ghost Protocol was five. Yeah, because Fallout was six. Fallout was six. Yep. And and then Dead Awakening. Um, Dead Reckoning. Dead Reckoning. Sorry. <laughs> Close enough. Um, okay. I think it might. I, Ghost Protocol might be the lowest. The one. worst. <laughs> okay. To Let's be honest. Just lock that in. Ghost Protocol. Um, do we think Endgame is like where do we where do we place Endgame? Um, that's so hard. Like, I have no idea where to put that. I'm thinking like I I think Arrival might be the top rate his top rated. I think so too. So let's go with Arrival top, and then Endgame is either going to be two or three. Endgame's got to be, like, three. And there's going to be, like, the town or Hurt Locker is going to be ahead of it. I Yeah, I don't know why. I feel like it's... Did Arrival didn't win an Oscar, did it? I think it I'll make sure. did. I can check real quick. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was nominated. I don't... Because, like, I know Hurt yeah. Locker won. Yeah. Because from our, from our draft, I don't think it was an option. So yeah. I don't think it won Best Picture. Not that that That's matters true. in terms of Rotten Tomatoes, but but that means Hurt, Lo- Hurt Locker might be number two then. Wouldn't that mean Hurt? I think Hurt Locker's won. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, you're saying Hurt Locker won Arrival two? Yeah. Ooh, so I don't think it's the other way around. I think Arrival's two or Arrival's won Hurt Locker's two. What if Endgame is last? It's, it's, no, there's no, no sh- way. There's no shot because it's there's no chance. It's definitely um, we're we're like splitting hairs here. Like all these movies are like 80s and 90s. Yeah, except for maybe Ghost Protocol. <laughs> um. All right. Well, if you want to put Heart Locker one, I'll concede that, and we can do Arrival two. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Yeah, I think Heart Locker one. Okay, Hurt, Locker, Arrival, and then Endgame? And then Endgame. Endgame, and then what about, uh, this is where we put Rogue Nation? Yeah. And then The Town? The Town, and then Ghost Protocol 6. Okay, The Town. All right, we are locking this in. This is, so we've got. The lowest one's probably going to be like an 80. <laughs> Yeah, Cause, so, so we've got number one is the Hurt Locker, number two is Arrival, number three is Endgame, number four is Rogue Nation, number five is The Town, and number six Ghost Protocol. <laughs> All right. So before we go, before we go over, I want to I want to mention that his top ten movies 
are all above 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. God damn. Holy we, Jeremy we start Renner, I underestimated yeah, you, start my dude. some respect on his name. <laughs> his top, my God. His top five, 93 and above. Wow. What was, damn. Wasn't that like Jennifer Lawrence too? Like her lowest yeah. was like an 80. Yeah. So, all right. So, number five, Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol. When, Fuck, at, 90, say, at 93 percent so what is number six yeah. what is our last one um what the, is our lowest the, the throwaway one is the town at 92 percent jesus what <laughs> oh. um all right and then number five mission impossible ghost protocol 93 percent mm-hmm. number four mission impossible rogue nation at 94 percent. Nice. good call <laughs> Ooh. number three arrival Oh, damn it. Also at 94%. Holy shit. Number two is Avengers Endgame. Also at at 94%. Good call with Hurt Locker. And then the Hurt Locker has a 97% in his top top rated movie. Oof. My God. (laughs) Jeremy Renner, I apologize. Yeah. I, I, I knew he was in some decent movies, but like... Yeah, his, uh, I'm, right. yeah. So yeah, let's do this last one and then move to. Uh, All uh, right, move last to our one. tier list. Aaron, you'll like this one. It is okay. Ha- Harrison Ford. Oh, this is gonna be another <laughs> one of those where it's like, ah, oh, man. All right. All right. Hit I us. got Star Wars: A New Hope. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Star Wars Episode Five: Empire Strikes Back, Blade Runner, the original. Oh my God! The Fugitive, and Star Wars: The Force Awakens. <laughs> That's the throwaway. <laughs> okay. Well, he was. I know he was nominated for an Oscar in The Fugitive because we talked about it. Um, yeah. During when he was on the um, when he was on the list, um, or on the movie grid. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to guide me with the Star Wars ones. Where do you think they? Okay, so uh, Empire is probably number one. Empire is one of the greatest movies of all time, so it's got to be number one. Okay, Empire. One. Uh, New Hope is probably somewhere around three or four. Um. Raid. I would say Raiders is probably number two. That's my guess. Raiders is number two. Um, there's got to be like, there's got to be like a, a crazy one here. Like the Fugitive is going to be like number three. Watch the Fugitive be one. That would be. <laughs> that would blow my mind. That would absolutely blow my mind. Um, I I, I almost have a sneaky suspicion that Blade Runner is going to be our throwaway. Yeah, because I and, think that uh, your gut reaction to Force Awakens, that it's going to be three now. Like it's going to be right, yeah, down, right, right dab in the middle. Do we want to throw it at three? Let's do three. <laughs> Ooh, oh wait, so what was right. two? Raiders two. So then a New Hope four. Yeah. No, nah, the, the fugitive I... is way too low. Okay, so because I it, it might. That that was. I don't know. The fugitive might be at five here. I don't think it's at five. Okay, so then now I, I've I, talked I, myself into that one being one. Oh no! <laughs> because oh no! <laughs> because these are all too good, and your immediate reaction to being Empire makes me think. No, Empire has to be number one. Uh, what about Fugitive um, 2, then? And then bump Raiders oh, down. We're going to bump Raiders down? I, th- All right. I think so. So, one okay. Empire. So, let me just restart this. Yeah, I got to cross out my yeast. I almost ran out of space. So, we got one Empire. Two Fugitive. Fugitive. Three Raiders. Raiders. Four Force okay. Awakens. Two. Five, Eight. New Hope. 
I feel like New Hope is way too low. Yeah, but this just might be one of those ones where like these are all 90s and that's just like a 92 compared to like I think Blade Runner is going to end up being in the 70s because I don't think it was very well received when it came out. Yeah, no, I think it's aged much better, but... Yep. Okay, so (sighs) lock it in. All right. We got Empire 1, The Fugitive 2, Empire Strikes Back 3. Nope. Oh, wait, Raiders sorry, sorry. 3. Uh, cause <laughs> I mixed up my list because I have that was the third one listed. Let me start over. Empire 1, The Fugitive 2, Raiders 3, Force Awakens 4, A New Hope 5, Blade Runner 6. Something about this does not All feel right. right. <laughs> not? <laughs> We're locking it in. I'm glad you guys changed a lot of things because you would have been very <laughs> worse off if you kept it. <laughs> Everything else. All right. So All right, the, let's, the let's throwaway at 88% is Blade Runner. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I knew it was going to come in like kind of Whoa. Okay. Um, number five is Star Wars A New Hope. Okay. At 93. Wow. This is what I'm saying. His low one would be 90, like 92, 93. <laughs> um, Star Wars A Force Awakens at 93 at number four. Oh. Oh. Number three Come on. is Raiders. Oh, at ninety three percent. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh then, no! I'll, I'll Just gonna, by the way he's reacting, I'm gonna say the number one at ninety six percent. Number one is The Fugitive. Fuck you! <laughs> I, it. I had a gut feeling. There's no way The Fugitive is higher than Empire. Empire is ninety five. Oh my god! So that was easily our best one. We were only off two you, points. If you listen to Aaron, if you listen to Connor, Aaron, you would have had. Listen, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe it. <sighs> I'm sorry. I let you down, Connor. <laughs> well, listen. This is I let we you had down. a much better showing than last time. We, <laughs> yeah, we went over on Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> yes we did <laughs> oh man all right let's do now that we're 45 minutes in let's do our tier list yeah, let's, all right let's do this real quick all right so we got my top 25 movies so before i even show mm. you the movies i'm gonna show you what the tiers are we've got phenomenal taste connor very good choice acceptable and i don't know about this one and lastly bro what are you on all right, bro. No, no pee pee poo poo. No, tier because these around. are all great movies. They don't deserve that. <laughs> and our movies, I'll run them oh, down. Whoa. We've got oh. Oppenheimer, the, Sp- the <laughs> Spectacular Now, Moneyball, okay. Wally, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, Jaws, Paddington 2, The Meg, Love Rosie, <laughs> After Sun, okay. The Dark Knight, Across the Spider Verse, La La Land, Whiplash, The Nice Guys, Dead Poet Society, Goodwill Hunting, Hereditary, Super Bad, Malignant, The Iron Giant, The Truman Show, Pearl, Aliens, and Top Gun Maverick. Immaculate taste. Thank I you. was expecting more horror. Yeah, I was too. I, I spoke up some in. We got two in there. We got two in there. But all right. You uh, got actually three. Yeah, you got, we got three. You have four. Well, if you count Jaws. One, two, three. <laughs> Four, five, actually. Five. Oh, five. Yeah. Six. All right. All right. <laughs> Six. Oh, actually, 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 the Meg. Um, all right. So I think we should put right now the Meg. And what is the one next to the Meg? Love Rosie. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, first off, I don't even know what the fuck Love Rosie is. Yeah. It is <laughs> so am, that's going in the bro, what are you on? It's a great rom com. <laughs> it's <laughs> bro. I love it. <laughs> Um, the Meg in your top twenty-five movies favorite. These aren't like my the twenty-five best. These are my twenty-five favorite. <laughs> yeah, y- yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> just, 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 All right. <laughs> well, we can get the obvious out of the way. Oppenheimer and Goodwill Hunting at the top tier. Phenomenal, phenomenal taste, Connor. Phenomenal taste. Thank you. Uh, I would also throw Moneyball into that category. And honestly, phenomenal I would taste. also phenomenal. I would also put Whiplash and La La Land in there. Yeah. We're we're gonna have a lot of phenomenal tastes and, in here. And, and Dark Knight. And Spider Verse. Okay. 
Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <maybe>. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, now it's better. <laughs> so, to run it back, Oppenheimer, Goodwill Hunting, Moneyball. You know what? We can drop Moneyball into very Aww. good <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to. Okay. We're gonna have be, to. I would be good. I would be okay with that. Uh, so La La Land and Whiplash, Dark Knight, and both Spider Verse movies are in phenomenal taste. Mm-hmm. Are you okay with that, Aaron? I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I would say Meg Two. We could. I, I don't know. How, let's just go down the order. So spectacular now. That's a good. Movie. Um, it's acceptable. I wouldn't say it's. It's not even in my top ten, like coming of age movies. To be completely mm, honest, acceptable. Like I would put Edge of Seventeen, Lady Bird, uh, Book Smart, and probably more. Oh, Clueless and Mean Girls, and um, there's more that I can't think of right now. But I would put all of those above this one. Breakfast Club would go above Spectacular. So it, it, I think it's acceptable. I don't think it's a bad choice. So you, got any, yeah. you got any objections? I would probably go up to the very good choice, but I mean, I'm okay with acceptable. I think acceptable. I mean, look, it's not, I, I wouldn't put it in the, the higher tiers. I would say it's like right middle of the road pick. It's not a bad pick. I'm not saying it's a bad pick. I just think there are better rom coms to pick. Mm hmm. Uh, really Wally, right. Wally, Wally is a very good choice. Wally, Wally's a highly choice. underrated Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wally's a solid choice. Uh, uh, Jaws, also a very good choice. <laughs> As Connor leans into the <laughs> into the camera, no, I, I'm okay. I, I'd put it in second tier. Very good choice. I could I could go second tier. You were gonna put it in acceptable. Jaws is good. No, no, no. I was going to put it in Bro, What Are You On? But <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, no, it was, it's a very good choice. It's a very good choice. I can't say it's not. Yeah. Uh, now, Paddington 2. Now, this is an interesting one because I've not seen Paddington. I've only seen the first one. And that was a damn good movie. Paddington 2 is so good, too. <laughs> um... I don't know. What would you say based on the first one? What would you say, Sam? First one would probably be a very good choice. Um, but again, okay, I so then that this. makes Paddington Two a very good choice. Sure. I'll do you have guys, to watch it then. Do you guys know what the the Rotten Tomato score for Paddington Two is? Isn't it like a ninety nine? It is a ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, it was a hundred for a while, and then they dug up one some like negative one negative review. Yeah. That, that, um, that one review, that one, that one critic's gonna be like, "I'm gonna be the glutton." That 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 <laughs> it's, it's it's like when people vote for the Hall of Fame. It's like, ah, we can't let this guy go in unanimous. Someone's got to just leave him off. Yeah, yeah. someone's got to do yeah. it. All right, uh, the Meg, Meg. two. Well, that's just no, the Meg. The, the Meg. Sorry, the, the Meg. Meg two fucking sucks. And I, I <laughs> the Meg. I will be the larger <laughs> man and say it. The Meg. Um, I, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, don't I don't know about the bag, man. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about this. I don't know about it. Um, are we are we saying that the I don't know about this tier or are we saying bro what are you on? No, I don't know about this. It wasn't okay. the worst, but it wasn't that You've great seen either. it? <laughs> I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, I'm good with that. After Sun, I swear. I haven't seen it, but I heard, I, I heard this was an excellent movie. Yeah, I'm good with like very good choice at the very minimum. Yeah, thank you. I'm good with that. The nice guys, however, yeah, <laughs> I would say I no would, higher than acceptable. I would do. I would be okay. I was gonna. I was thinking acceptable. Okay. Okay. okay I'm good with. Have acceptable. you guys seen the nice guys? I have a while ago. I probably oh, have. I think I, I have. I love that. It's so funny. I'm. Su- oh wait, no, it is on here. I was gonna say I'm surprised Top Gun Maverick isn't on this list, but nope, I see it <laughs> hanging on right at the end. Um, Dead Poet Society. See, that's a good choice too. That's a good movie. That's a very good movie. 
Very good choice. Yeah, very good choice. I'd be okay with that. Very good choice. Uh, Hereditary, instant bro. Or what do you want? Are you serious? I mean, I haven't. I haven't seen no, it. I haven't. I don't. It's just just because it's horror. Um, I don't know. I think I. I. I, I don't know. I mean. Just my opinion, I'm I I wouldn't have any horror movies in my top twenty five. Listen, this is so for th- yeah, me. This is how you would rank them, <laughs> not how you think I. So for, okay. Uh, for me, I would put in. I don't know about this, but that's just me. That's the whole point of this. Sam, do you have any objections? I uh, I haven't seen it, so I heard it was really good though. Um, super bad, good comedy. Very funny comedy. I just actually it was on TV the other day, and I caught the second half of it. It's funny. Not I don't know if it's top twenty-five funny. Yeah, I I do acceptable. Yeah, I'd go no higher than acceptable. And Connor's having a stroke in his chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the best comedies ever made. And it's acceptable. Uh, malignant. I would say is right on par with Hereditary. I mean, I again, I haven't seen it, so <laughs> <laughs> it hurts Connor to do this. I can see it. <laughs> um, The Iron Giant. Oh, that's a good movie. That's a very good choice, I think. <laughs> Connor is like freaking out in his chair. Um, Sherman Shaw. Oh, that's also a very good movie. <laughs> All right, I think for the sake of this list and for the sake of our sanity, um, I think it should go unacceptable. Why? I don't know. <laughs> the show's great. Yeah. I, Is it top 25 great? Not for Probably me. Probably not for me. Not for me, but again. that See, that's what we're ranking yes. it on. So. <laughs> I don't know. But. Is it in our top? Is it top twenty-five? Great for us. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> no, but again, my top twenty-five would all be in phenomenal. So, yeah, well, if well, we put that's this one, we're not we ranking put... <laughs> your top twenty-five. We're ranking Connor's top twenty-five. Yeah, but like, I don't. I just. I don't know. I don't know about it. <laughs> I. I just. I can't. I can't see myself putting it above acceptable. Oh, I. How are we gonna figure this out fight, now? Because I can't go fight, below. Sam, fight the good fight. <laughs> Think about it, though, Sam. In your t- would this even be in your top twenty-five? The Truman Show? I, I probably not. Definitely top. 50. Then there we go. That's all you need. Top fi- yes, That's all you need. Yes, but but if it was according to Connor, all twenty-five. But it's not. not. This, is, this is how you <laughs> guys rank these Hold movies. On. Oh, I know, I know. But all his top twenty-five would be in the top tier. All mm-hmm. my top twenty-five would be in the top tier. I'm not putting this movie in the top tier. I'm putting this movie in the right. second to the top. Mm, I don't know about that though, because like you just said, it's not in your top twenty-five. I think, look, acceptable is means it's not a bad choice. It's just not one that we would prefer. <laughs> Which, I mean, you said you wouldn't put it in your top twenty. I wouldn't put it in my top twenty-five. I wouldn't put. I think I wouldn't put Wally that's... in my top twenty-five. I wouldn't put. Dead Poet Society, my top twenty-five. Well, now we got to rethink this whole. <laughs> They're list. all in, bro. What are you on? <laughs> Except for Gobo. What, I, what I'm thinking about is this: to- the top tier, phenomenal taste is like that's hmm. like the top twenty-five of what I would put in. Um, I would say that should be both like both the top two tiers because like a very good choice is like I'd say that's top fifty. I, so, I'm not gonna try to sway how you would think about it, but in my in my opinion, when I was like making this <laughs> tier, like that top tier phenomenal taste, I think those are the movies where I think like yes, all three of us we would consider like phenomenal movies. Mm-hmm. In our top twenty five, that you know that's subjective because listen, I I love love Rosie and. That was an afterthought <laughs> in this. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it really doesn't matter. But I felt like phenomenal. That's like something we would all agree on. Are, these are great movies that you could watch whenever. Mm-hmm. The very good choice. That's like if phenomenal taste was like top 10. These are like your, your floaters like in the teens. Like, yeah, you know, maybe this could have cracked my top 10. 
but I acknowledge it's a good movie. Acceptable, it's like, okay, it's not me, but I could see why you would like it. I don't know about this. Is That's where it's like, hey, man, what? I don't know if this should be on your top 25. <laughs> and, and then, bro, what are you on is reconsider. This does not deserve a spot yeah, on this list. Reconsider. <laughs> um, that's right. why I think Truman Show is acceptable. That's why I think right. Truman Show is acceptable. I will concede. Oh, God damn it, Sam. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. Um, Pearl. Now, for me... For me, I'm not putting that in my top 25. Obviously. I probably wouldn't even put it in my top 25 of the 2020s. <laughs> Acceptable. <laughs> but I know Connor's a huge fan of it, so I can understand why he would put it on his list. Bro, what do you want? <laughs> I'd put on, I don't know about I, I'd go... I don't know about this. I'm good with that. I, I'm always down to put a horror movie into I don't know about this. <laughs> that should just be this tier. Just, eh. Yeah. Connor's horror picks, really, is what it is. <laughs> oh, you're not um, going to say aliens. this one. Aliens, however. Aliens. Aliens. I think is a, is, is, is a good choice. It's a very good choice. Come on. Let's be real. It's Aliens. Um, I think I want to adjust now that thinking about Connor's criteria here, I want to adjust Wally down to acceptable. Okay. Are you okay with that, Sam? Uh, yeah, yeah that's fine. I think that's because you, Sam, you made a good point saying that Wally wouldn't be in your top 25. It wouldn't be in my top 25 either, much like Truman show, but I can see where someone would include that. Mm -hmm. So we're dropping that down. And finally, Top Gun Maverick. Um, see, I want to put it in. I want to put it in very good choice. But that means I also want to knock one down so we don't have to go into a second row. <laughs> or. Oh, <right. laughs> it or, doesn't care about your OCD, Aaron. <laughs> or I could just do that and it just extend the oh. screen a bit. <laughs> All right. Well, now I can put it in very good choice. <laughs> yeah, I put that in very good choice. Okay. Do do you guys <laughs> have any other alterations you would like to make? Um, I don't know. We could move spectacular now down to I don't know about this. <laughs> no, I keep it acceptable. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's good where it's at. Um, no, I think I think it's a good list. Sam, I think we nailed it. Yeah, I think it's also a very good list. Okay. So in Phenomenal Taste, Connor, we have Oppenheimer, Goodwill Hunting, La La Land, Whiplash, The Dark Knight, and both Spider-Verse movies. In very good choice, we have Moneyball, Jaws, Paddington 2, After Sun, Dead Poet Society, The Iron Giant, Aliens, and Top Gun Maverick. And acceptable, we have The Spectacular Now, The Nice Guys, Superbad, Truman Show, and Wally. I don't know about this. Uh, we have the Meg, Hereditary, <laughs> Malignant, and Pearl. And surprisingly, the only only one movie made it into Bro, What Are You On? And that is a Love Rosie. Well, I mean, pretty acceptable reason to put that in Bro, What Are You On? <laughs> it's fair. If this was about time, oh. where would you? Because it, it kind of came down to those two. I would not put about time on my. I I would think it would be in the same tier. Really, <laughs> as good as good ab as about time is, it is not. It is not a top twenty five movie. <laughs> okay, well, we got our list. All right, sweet. Um, well, I think it's about time that we round off this episode. Then, um, if you liked what you were listening to. You know, subscribe, leave a rating, give us a give us a follow. You know, share it with your friends, all that fun stuff. You know, it helps us out a lot. It shows us that we're doing good things. And you know, if you like it, someone else you know might like it. You know, even if it's not really your thing, if you know someone that you might like, or that might like it, you know, share it, share it with them. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and all the other socials at the Filmbox Pod, 
or the Film Box podcast. Those will all be linked in the description below. Um, I want to thank Josh Woodward for our awesome theme music per usual. And um, yeah, you can go to our website for new movie reviews, uh, game content, um, you know, TV content sports content we do a sports podcast connor and i do called ship city that comes out every week on on tuesdays so you can listen to that um we also have you know a premier league podcast from our friends over at the away fans um you know so fun stuff uh and also finally you can follow our letterbox and uh Take to just you know follow us on what we're watching in between our podcasts and our movie reviews and all that kind of stuff when we watch them and get our our thoughts what we la- what we liked what we didn't like how we rated it you know so follow us on Letterboxd. Um, uh, with that said, this has been the Film Box Podcast, and we will see you guys later. Bye bye. Message or call me because I'm living life in airplane mode. And- Everything is okay, I just want to play, unplug for the day, and live in the moment, cause I'm living